James Wallace. I've been flying since I was 18. I was kind of one of the last people drafted and I learned how to fly in the military. But later on in life, after going through as a Navy pilot, landing on carriers, and then they put me in the engineering program where I actually test flew airplanes for a while. I decided that I didn't want to be in the military because I didn't like being a costume warrior. I went to the scientific service and flew in NOAA, which is the guys who fly in the hurricanes and do weird things like count whales. But I got sick of that and I went to Africa and kind of worked as kind of a mercenary for a while. And we did some interesting flying. And I'll tell you a little story about an evac. Was we would have the Somalis would go crazy about every three weeks and they decide to try and kill each other and we didn't like being in the middle of it because we're working with the UN. So the UN guys would call me and say, you know, can you get us out of there? So I'd hop in the caravan in Nairobi and fly up and it's about three hours to get up to Mogadishu. So I get over Mogadishu and it's like 4.30 in the afternoon and I start noticing all these little clouds appearing next to me, both sides of the airplane. Like, what the hell is that? And I realized they're shooting at me with a 37 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. And that's flat. I've never seen it before. So they said, well, they're really unfriendly today. But I uh, decided to go back to near a place called Kismaya. And do you want to look at the way to take there, yeah. Okay. Anyhow, so I, I knew that I had some fuel stash with the Red Cross camp uh, about 30 clicks to the uh, west of Kismaya. So I landed on the road, uh, taxied off into the bush, and uh, hung out with those guys. And when I got there, it was pretty much dark. So I refueled from jerry cans, and uh, I, which on a caravan was about 50 jerry cans. And uh, you know, went and slept in the airplane, lost most of my blood to mosquitoes that night. And uh, decided I, I, the way to do an evac with the Somalis, they chew the stuff called chat, they get all wired. And they don't wake up till like 9 o'clock in the morning. So the plan was, I get there just at sunrise, about 10,000 feet, feather the engine, and glide down and land and pick everybody up. And the Somalis wouldn't hear us coming and they wouldn't wake up. So I get in the airplane about oh, 4.35 in the morning and uh, start it up and take off. And I'm doing max angle of climb so I can get them on the handy talkie and tell them to get ready to come out to the airport. And I get about 5,000 feet and the engine flames out. And so quick thinking me, put on auto relight and realizing that I probably had water in the fuel. So I get to Mogadishu, wait for the sun to just creak over the horizon so I could see the runway. Feathered the engine, went down and landed and rolled out with the engine still running but the prop feathered. And so everybody's running to the airplanes. Like all these UN people with their bags are running and they're getting in the airplane. I'm walking around the airplane opening all the fuel stop cocks. And I got 15 gallons of water out of the caravan. And what was happening is the Somalis were stealing the kerosene, the jet fuel, because they could use it in their cooking stoves. And then they would refill it with water to make the level come back up so I wouldn't notice. But kind of noticed on the other way. But turbines will run if you put the ignition on continuous if you have water. It doesn't work with pistons. But anyhow, we made it out of there and the Somalis are basically scratching their butts as we took off and going, you know, hey, hey, shouldn't we have shot them? <laughs> <laughs> That's a quick bush story about water. Do you have a good bush flying tip you'd like to share? Maybe you got a special aircraft that would suit our featured aircraft section. Got a good story or know someone has a good bush flying story that would suit our featured pilot section? Look, if you've got something you want to share on Bushfires Down Under, hit me up at uh, the Look for Tim Howes on the Bushfiring page and send me a message or shoot me an email to bushfiresdu at gmail.com and we'll get a video made and share it with everyone. Thanks, guys.